beat sound until the AM. So we'll, but I'll, I'll grab one of the boom mics left to right, and then we'll bring that over to the. I understand. I know. I, I've been. I didn't have that either. <laughs> He thinks he's busy with, you know, just a couple of kids. <laughs> Wait until the teenagers. He has no idea. He said that... Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Let's turn to page 139, if you would, please. He said that... Uh, page 139, as we stand, as we sing, when I see the blood of the night on the very first, I swung and Smith. 
For those of you who don't know me, and for those of you who do know me, need to be reminded. I met another Smith this morning, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, not all Smiths are created. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you have a good name, though. Uh, about, uh, well, I'll just get started in this uh, after I share. My wife says that she misses you, she wishes she could be here, and my kids are all scattered around, and they, they send their greetings as well. I talked to my, my daughter yesterday up in North Carolina. She said, make sure you tell those people we, we said hello. We enjoyed that church, and we, we lived here for a couple months over the trip. Um, they really got to, to love it. Lacey Tree College is the ministry that I'm presenting today. Here, here's my family. Um, some of you may, may recognize them, and some of you may be like, man, who are those kids? They were, they were wee little ones when they were here before, and that's true. Praise the Lord for my family. We've added five more to my family since I was here last. Actually, not since I was here last. We've had a quarter of my family since my kids grew up. I just put it up. So I have three in-laws and two grandchildren. There, we just took this picture at Christmas time. Uh, so we have uh, Rachel, our oldest, the one that's in the wheelchair from her. She's with my wife and I in uh, Utah. And then our youngest is also with us in Utah. Her name is Kate, and she is sitting out this semester uh, waiting to, to hear from the Lord what she should do next after. Uh, school or if she needs to go back to school and that sort of thing. She has a real heart for the Lord as well. Rachel is doing well. Um, she sends her greetings. She, she wants everyone to know that she had eye surgery recently and she can now see the screen in church. She doesn't have to, to read her Bible like this like she used to because she just had that surgery. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, Sarah, this is Rachel's twin. She's in North Carolina. She and her husband are preparing for the mission field to closed countries, uh, closed access countries, I guess you would say. They are <coughs> working on business, so getting their business started to be able to have access into these closed countries. They're really wanting to go to North Africa uh, and work in, in and among the Muslim Islamic people and teach them the truth. And then our middle daughter, uh, her husband just took a church in Colorado pastor there died of COVID a couple of years ago, so they were without a pastor for about a year, and then uh, TJ, my son-in-law, took that church this last summer. And then my son, he got married this summer, and is living in Florida. That's about as far away from Utah as you can get, and still be in the United States. But he and his wife are living there in Florida. She teaches English in the school there, and he is a, uh, what do you call it, a physiologist? He stretches people. He works at the stretch lab like a chiropractor does. Um, he got his degree last year in Bible and stretchology and, uh, from the Mary Mountain Baptist University. But that's where they're at in Florida. They've been a big uh, part of our ministry. Oh, I should, should say my wife's name is Stephanie. Sometimes I forget to say that, but she's, she's a major part of, of me. She's a major part of our ministry. We could not be doing what we're doing without her. We gave our lives to the Lord uh, to do this ministry full time about 30 years ago. Uh, the Lord blessed me with a partner to do this, this, this whole time. I graduated from Bob Jones University through the Carpentry and Construction Program in 1993. Uh, they don't have that car Carpentry and Construction Program anymore, but they used to. And uh, with that said, um, in some of the classes I was taking, carpentry, uh, I was doing uh, framing, framing houses. The first year we, we built cabinets and things like that. The second year we built houses. And so I got some experience there. But also in, in the classroom, learning evangelism and learning some Bible courses and some doctrine courses and things like that at the same time as learning architecture and cabinetry and construction. And that was a big part of who I am. It's a big part of how I've gotten some experience and how the Lord worked in my life. And while I was there at Bob Jones, in one of the architecture classes, I remember it was, it was three hours long, uh, it was on Wednesdays, 
right before chapel, so we had to get up pretty early to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, sometimes basketball practice is at 5, so we go through that, get a shower, everything in time for this architecture class. And it was uh, every Wednesday, I remember. And during one of the classes, some guys who had already been through the carpentry program, they already graduated, they came to my class and showed slides of uh, mission trips that they had been on. And I was like, this, how can this be architecture or whatever? And I found out later that the, path, the, the architecture teacher was a pastor in town, and he invited them to come and share with my class uh, what the Lord had been doing through their experience after graduating from, from college in the carpentry construction program. Oh, bad. And at that time, I was searching for what the Lord would have to do. I had a hard time with school. Sounds like a... I really struggled with spelling. Or something. Uh, Brother Anderson and I were talking about the way you spell, what was that word? Pre presentation. And I uh, told him I was the wrong person to ask. But when it comes to English, spelling, uh, even science and history, any type of lecture type class, I really struggled. I had to do uh, more hands-on stuff. So in PE, boy, I really thrived. And when I went to, to cabinetry class, it was a hands-on thing, I, I did well. The only, the only class that I remember getting an A in high school was geometry, uh, which was ironic because the Lord gave Lord gives each of us different abilities, and geometry goes right hand in hand with construction. Stairs, rafters, that kind of thing, is the angles and things of geometry. That to say that during this time, I was wondering what the Lord wanted to do with me. I uh, really wanted to serve him, but I did not know how. I thought in order to, to be a minister, i use that biblical term, in order to be a minister for the Lord, I had to know how to preach. I had to know how to maybe do special music or play an instrument. That was, that was not, not easy for me. And I was wrong. The Lord used these guys to show me through their slide presentation that you don't have to be something that you're not. God has given us every ability that we need to please Him. Everything that we need in order to minister and these guys showed pictures of a, a project in Hong Kong beginning where they built a building for a, a Christian school. Before they had built that building, the students were, I mean, they had desks, but they were out underneath an oak tree, and they didn't have a building. Uh, the teacher was teaching them, and, it's, and I thought, man, that's the kind of school I want to go to. Every time it rains, you get to go home. And that was not um, what the Lord wanted for me. But it was neat to see these guys, how they were using their abilities and their experience from the school that they went to at Bob Jones to be able to be used by the Lord on this ship. They showed pictures of this, uh, this boat that they had built. There was a missionary that was on an island, and he had to pay thousands of dollars every month to get groceries and supplies from the mainland. Uh, he would have to hire a helicopter and have things dropped off and that sort of thing. These, these two guys that graduated from Bob Jones, they were probably uh, mid-20s, early-30s. They, uh, they built a pontoon boat, so this guy could get back and forth to the mainland and get, get supplies without having to pay all that money for, for air fare. I thought, that is, that is very unique. That's, that's the way that God gave those guys talents to be used on the mission field. And then, then when I put that together, and the Lord said, Mike, you, you have talent as well. In the verse in 1 Corinthians 7, 7, it says, Every man, mankind, human, hath his proper gift of God. One after this manner, and another after that. And God was sharing with me that I, I wasn't stupid because I didn't know how to spell. That my brother was stupid because I didn't know how to use to No, that God gave us all different abilities or different gifts. But then in 1 Timothy 4.14 it says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee. And that's where God got a hold of my heart and said, You don't have to be in front of people in order to be used by the Lord. I can...
do what he's called me to do, do something that I like, being gifted with my hands to be able to build and, and do construction. That can be used just as much on the same level, not one higher than the other, but just as much as any other gift that God has given. So we started serving missionaries internationally through Hellas. We took our name Smith, made an acrostic out of it. In 1994, after we got married, we started taking mission trips. We would go to foreign countries as well as our own country, different, different places in our country seem very foreign to some. Uh, you get out to California, you know what I mean. You go to Utah, it's a different place. You, from here, if you went to like Baltimore, Maryland, or New York City, maybe Boston, it's a totally different culture, very similar to going to Mexico, although Mexico is a lot closer to you guys. worldwide throughout Lawrenceville, Georgia. We have about 500 missionaries now, uh, most of which are church planners. We are the only ones that do this type of health ministry. But we started out helping local churches. Uh, you can see your church right there in the middle. Uh, that, that was one that the Lord allowed us to help back in the late 90s. And then in the mid-2000s, we got this visibility from where we're going. Praise the Lord for that. We were able to help a lot of missionaries in different countries as well as our own country. Uh, over the years, being in one place for a couple of months or, or maybe up to six months and sometimes a week or two weeks or something like that, that was like our first ten years of ministry. We would travel and go and help a church and we'd move on and go, go to a, a project overseas and then we'd come back and, and uh, go to another church and that sort of thing and it was very taxing on the family and so we decided to, to take some longer term projects and the kids were getting to be in their teenage years and, and upper uh, upper elementary years it was a little bit more difficult to travel you, you would think you know the early years that's when it's difficult to travel but you know you could just give them drama me and they'd be out and then it'd be <laughs> fun right uh, when they get to be teenagers, it's a little more difficult. They need some more stability. So we took longer-term projects at different camps, especially uh, where we could be for a year and a half or two years. We would do some church uh, buildings uh, that would be a year and a half or two-year projects. And, and the Lord allowed us to minister in about 90 different ministry building projects over the last 30 years. Um, we've been in 20 different countries been able to help in about 40 different American states. And the Lord began to impress on my heart what's going to happen when you're gone. What's going to happen when I take you home? My kids now, three of them are married. As I was thinking through this, they were in college, and uh, none of them really had the same burden that I had to help churches with building projects. They were all gifted in that area because I taught them what I do, but they, they didn't have the same burden. God gave them other burdens. Uh, and they are ministry. They are using their talents and abilities for the Lord. And I began to think, man, what's going to happen? So we, we started taking young people with us. And, and you met Ariel the last time we were here. Ariel <coughs> uh, She was with us for about a year. Praise the Lord. She is in Australia today. It's Australia. Not because of us, but I know that the Lord used us to impress things on her heart and help her see the different mission fields that, that we were at. There's been some young men that are now 
serving the Lord with their talents. I, I know uh, one is in North Carolina. He's an HVAC guy for the church there. He oversees all of the, the uh, what do you call it, air conditioning systems there at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in, in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. There's another young man that was with us for a few months. He's an electrician down in uh, the Denver, Colorado. I guess that's up from here, Denver, Colorado area at, at uh, 21 years old. Uh, making six figures as an electrician, but loves the Lord, and he's giving every Sunday and in that church every every week. He's faithful. Uh, I'm just thankful that the Lord has given us those opportunities to invest in young people, and He kept on burning my heart that this is what what we need to to kind of pursue, not just for those young people, but for the churches that we're in and the, and the missionaries that need help. Um, over the years, there have been in the, in the last 20 years, I was, I was asked to figure out how many times I had to tell a pastor no. How many times I had to tell a missionary, I'm sorry, I'm at a different place. I'm, the Lord has brought us here and I can't come and help you. And we estimated over 200 times when I had to turn down a project. That, that is not um, comforting <laughs> to me. To have this, and it's not comforting to the pastor either. When they call and they say, uh, so and so gave us your name, you did a good job on this project, we'd like to have you come and, and uh, be the, the foreman for our, our project. And I would say, you know what, I've booked out for the next two years. I'm sorry I can't come. With, with that, and the fact that skilled labor is in decline all over the world, but in our country, it's really hard to find somebody that will show up on time that is, is skilled in a, in a particular area. And then when you combine that with having the heart for ministry and, and the needs of pastors and youth pastors and, and Christian workers in the church that are in decline, um, wow, the needs are overwhelming, aren't they? But you know, that's not a new problem. There is a need for Christians in the construction environment. I'll flip through these quickly. If you can read those, that there's a lot of different needs in the construction environment. But then when you add the church environment, then you've got pastors and assistant pastors and youth pastors and Sunday school teachers. Just the need for deacons and support staff. Uh, there's huge need out there. What's the, what's the Bible tell us? But the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labor is a few. This is an age-old problem. It's not something new. When, when I had to tell a pastor, I'm sorry, I can't come right now. I'd really like to come. And these are guys that are my friends. These are guys like, pastors asked me to come before, and I haven't been able to. And there's been times when God has allowed me to be able to. But that really burdened my heart. And so I started praying this prayer. God was burning my heart to help those pastors even though I couldn't do it. And so when a pastor would call and he'd say, what's your schedule look like six months from now? We've got this project going on. And I'd have to say, you know what, I'm, I'm booked for a while and I can't come. I'd really like to come. But I will pray that God will send you a laborer. I'll pray that God will send you somebody to do that project. And even if it wasn't encouraging to the pastor, it was encouraging to me that I had a solution to the problem. You, you have a solution to the problem. The Bible says, pray you therefore. Because there's not enough laborers, because people are not answering the call, here's a solution. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. When a pastor would, would uh, ask for help, get an email or something, I have to communicate back to them, I'll pray for you. I can't come right now. And then what was really neat was to see that answer that prayer. And I didn't have to be everywhere at once. Uh, although I wanted to be. And the Lord put that burden on my shoulders. That's, that's part of uh, the passion that He has given me is to help these, these ministries. So with, with that said, the lack of laborers, the skilled labor in decline, 
the need for, for pastors and churches, uh, I, I've got a list of about 35 churches in the Rocky Mountain region alone. That's, that's my Judea. That's, that's my people in the Rocky Mountain region. I, I live in Colorado. 35 churches that are without pastors right now that I get to pray for, that, that God will send them a pastor. And it's neat to see how one by one those needs are met. God has burned my heart not just to pray, though, and I shouldn't say just, not only to pray, but to put feet to my prayers as well and, and try doing that by multiplying, showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He had done. Psalm 78 has been a, a blessing to me as we've been starting Legacy Trade College, leaving the legacy behind Showing the generation to come the praise of the Lord. There's, there's another verse, I don't have it up here, but it says, teaching them what you've learned and where you've learned that from. Who, who taught you that? Uh, if the Lord has taught me things, then it's my responsibility to teach others also. What does that remind you of? 2 Timothy 2, 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. This uh, reproduction process, the multiplication process, is, uh, well, has been impressed on my heart. This is where we need to be. My, my children are off doing their, their ministries, but God has gifted other people in some of the same areas that I've been gifted in. Why not teach them to use their gifts for the Lord? The need is there, but that doesn't necessarily dictate a call. The passion is there. Many times when you when you connect the need and the passion, and you think, well, that's the call. <coughs> but guess what? The Word of God is there as well. When you put those three things together, that's what dictates a call. The, the circumstances... The Word of God and the peace of the Holy Spirit, those three things, when they line up, you know that that's God's will. If they don't line up, pretty sure that you wait until it does, or it's not God's will. So with that said, the Lord has led us to start a ministry called Legacy Trade College. This um, is not to replace other schools out there that are doing the same thing. And there aren't any, by the way. The one that I went to, Bob Jones University, shut down their, their trade program about 15 years ago. And that's another thing that burned my heart for this. Uh, who, is, who is doing this? Who is teaching carpentry and construction and initiatives at the same time? Who is teaching welding and biblical counseling? Who is teaching cosmetology and biblical counseling? I think that's, that's pretty neat when you think of those things. Uh, using your hands, using your God-given talents to, to be used by the Lord, as well as having the knowledge of Bible. Uh, why not have a major in a college called bivocational pastoral studies. Many of these churches in, in the Rocky Mountain region are very small, much smaller than this. Um, they can't afford a pastor. So the pastors that come there usually have to raise missionary support or they come uh, and work a secular job at the same time. With this type of thought, by vocational pastoral studies, you can train a pastor with a high quality education, get their uh, Master of Divinity degree, but then have a welding background or something in cabinetry or construction or automotive or all these different types of uh, ways to work with your hands. Make money, but also get in the community, meet people. Uh, there's so many aspects to this that it's, it's like, why didn't I think of this 30 years ago? Um, and, I, and I did, but the Lord uh, brought me to this point by experience. One day at a time, one year at a time, being involved in different ministries and seeing the needs and then 
overwhelmingly lead me to doing what we're doing now. So we were given some facilities in Marysville, Utah. I know that, that seems like a different world, and it is from here. But so some have been called to the highways and others to the edges. Why? To bring them into the feast, right? This is a place of 350 people, a town. The closest Walmart is maybe half an hour away, Richfield, Colorado. There's about 8,000 people there. There is more people in Houston, Texas than in the whole state of Utah. We I mean, think about that. We've got, in the, in the Rocky Mountain region, we have uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Montana, and there's about uh, 25 million people in those eight, nine states. It's not the highest populated area, but it is very needy, very, very needy. One of the last uh, mission fields in the world. Remember when Paul was told to go, go west, go to Macedonia, and he did, and then, then the, the, uh, the gospel started moving farther and farther west, and it came over to the new world the, that's now the United States, Canada, and South America, and kept on moving west, well, there's a, there's a few areas that still need to be reached that haven't been reached yet. There's a lot of areas that have been reached a long time ago, and now they've, they've lost it, and they, they need to be reached again. I don't want you to get me wrong. The Bible says go into all the world, to every creature, all nations. But the Lord's burned my heart for the Rocky Mountain region. And one of the, one of the I'm getting off here, when I was in North Africa, um, ministering there with some friends, rented a car and went down from Tanche all the way up to the top of by it was only nine miles from from uh, Spain, across the Strait of Gibraltar. We went into Tanje, we rented a car and we drove down towards Casablanca over to Rabat. And then we went inland over to Fez. And then up by the the the, the desert there, the, the major desert. And then we went up to uh, Shechuan, the blue city and over on the Mediterranean side and back over to Tanger. We spent about five or six days doing that, visiting different uh, ministers of the gospel. And while doing that, I saw these, what they call minarets, poking up everywhere. And in the rural areas and in the cities, there's these minarets. And what they, they do is they, over these loudspeakers, um, have a call to prayer five times a day. And it's an area that's about 98% Muslim. So some of them uh, don't, don't pay attention to it at all. <clears throat> we, we would call those uh, Jack Muslims. Uh, they're ones that don't really care about their religion, but that's what they are. Uh, and then there's those that are very devout, and they'll be on their knees as soon as that thing goes off. And, and uh, anyways, it reminded me of being in Utah and seeing these spires everywhere with the, the, the golden uh, statue of Moroni playing the, the trumpet. Uh, but they dot the hillsides in rural areas and in the cities and it was almost exactly like when I was in Morocco seeing these minarets everywhere and the Lord really burned my heart for my own country. Um, that was a big part of why we're in Utah right now. It doesn't mean that we're not continuing to go to other uh, countries. And I really have a burden for that too. I'd like to go to Mongolia this summer if the Lord works that out. I anyway, we are located in Marysville, Utah. The Lord gave us that really nice building. We have a full cabinet shop. We have a dormitory. Uh, we have two staff apartments, a classroom that, that we do our, our uh, online and live classes with Maranatha Baptist University. Uh, we're right in the in the valley here. On the west side is gold mines and silver mines, and on the east side was the uranium mines. And right in the middle is Marysvale, Utah. Excuse me, Marysvale, 
is known for the Paiute Trail. I don't know if anybody ever heard of the Paiute Trail. Uh, it has about 2,000 miles of four-wheeler trail uh, that is right there in the heart. So you can get down to the Grand Canyon, you can get over to Bryce Canyon, Zions Canyon, uh, all the big five national parks from right there in Marysville on a four-wheeler. And so people come during the summer and they RV there and our town goes from about 350 to 400 people to about three to 5,000 people in the summertime uh, because of that, that industry, the tourist industry. It's also known for, <clears throat> any, any hunters here? Do you have any hunters? A few, okay. Have you ever heard of the spider bull? The largest bull elk ever shot in the world was right there on Monroe Mountain, Mary's Hill. Uh, we, we hold the, the record for the largest bull elk. Um, it's also an area that is predominantly uh, LDS, or Latter-day Saints, the Mormon people. Our town is about 70%, but the county is about 90% <coughs> LDS. So it's right in the heart of a, a cultic uh, mission field that we can tell people the truth for the first time. Sometimes they, the, only, the only time they've ever heard the name of Jesus is when it's part of their church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They don't, that's not the same Jesus. They, um, they may have heard the name Jesus on the TV as a, a swear word or something like that, but it's, it's really interesting that you can be in the United States and people say, I don't know what you're talking about. When you say, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you say, no, I've never heard that before, or anything in the Bible. The, you know, the story of Moses or Elijah or, or Daniel, no, I've never heard that. I, I know that's part of the, the Holy Scriptures, but nobody's ever told me those stories before. And that's right in our own town. Here's the part of the cabinet shop. We have three of these bays. It's fully furnished, so it's kind of neat the way, well, kind of neat. It's, it's a huge blessing the way the Lord has provided all of this for us. We're partnering with Maranatha Baptist University. They have this Bridge to Campus program where they're, they're uh, allowing us to use their teachers, their professors, to teach Bible, as well as any of the core curriculum uh, classes that students would want to take. So here at Legacy, um, we can offer an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree through Maranatha Baptist University. And then and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> we don't have to have all the teachers for that. Our, our teachers are the ones that are teaching welding and cabinetry and construction and in the future cosmetology and automotive and boy I can think of a thousand other things that I've got on my list horseshoeing and piano tuning and a whole bunch of things that I'd like to get into but my board is saying let's, let's stay let's stay focused Mike stay, stay here stay with me keep your feet on the ground we're going to get started first and then we'll branch out and expand oh let me go back so we have a board of directors um, there's so some God-gifted men that uh, bring a lot to the table there to help us make decisions. Just this week, I know some of you read our prayer letters, <clears throat> just this week we got a letter from the IRS. You might be thinking, oh man, the IRS, every time I work with them, it's horrible. We got a pleasant letter. It's an approval for our tax exemption. This has been like 10 months coming in. Three times they've asked for more information and everything. And just this past Monday, a week ago, the Lord gave us tax exemption with the federal government. So that, that puts us in the next, the next bracket, if you will. We can do a whole lot more with that. So we're praising the Lord for that. Um, Marysville Baptist Church is a church that was planted in, in Marysville about 25 years ago. Jonathan Edwards is the name of the pastor that planted that church. It's now in its second pastor. His name is Richard Boyle, and, and uh, it's, it's only about two blocks away from the college, so we're, we're very happy to be a part of that. And then John and Mary Lynn Ennis are the ones that gave us this facility right there in Marysville. John Ennis was a bachelor in California, and uh, excuse me. it's been a little over 20 years ago when he started this ministry. It was an addictions ministry in the building that they have donated to us. Um, they would teach men how to read your Bible, how to, how to be faithful to the Lord, come to church, dress up when you come to church. 
and uh, and then cabinetry at the same time. He would use that cabinet shop to build pulpits and communion tables for a lot of the mission churches out there in the West. It's a neat ministry. Um, but, but over the years, as he aged, he, he was trying to get somebody to take over that and could not find anybody that has the same type of burdens as him. Um, but, but the Lord hooked us up, and I used some of his guys on projects that I would be doing in, in the state of Utah especially. And he asked me if I would take over that a number of years ago. And I made the excuse that I had a young family, and I was not going to put them in that environment. And then as my, my kids got older, I, I would tell them, you know what, I've got four teenage daughters. I am not putting them in that environment with addicted men. And he asked me again after they were in college, and I, I thought, well, what, can I, what excuse can I come up with now? Uh, and my wife said, well, you should pray about your, your burden, your, your passion. I started to pray about see what he thinks. So after a couple weeks of praying about it, I went to Mr. Dennison and I told him, you know, I don't have the same burden that you do, but I do have this burden and this vision to leave a legacy behind of the things that I have wanted to want to teach others. And there's such a need for construction missions and all these other trades. And he said, oh, he's like, I would love it if the Lord used this facility so after I'm dead and gone. So he started leaving a legacy behind, giving us this, this million dollar bill of facilities there and getting it started. One of my board members uh, says, says this, is, this, this is like a maternity boy. I'm like, what do you mean by that? I said, well, this is a great place to birth this baby. <laughs> That's right, because when you handle about 15 people, the place to get started is like the cabinet shop, you've got an automotive shop. We've got all these facilities to get started. And that's what we need. Once we get going, then we'll move on. It's a great place right now to get started. That's John as Marilyn and Dennis. And as you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited about all these things that God is doing. He is the answer to answer our prayer. He sent us, sent us seven different mission teams last summer to help us, to help us get ready for the school year. So this building that we have, even though it is a huge blessing from the Lord, it's a liability as well. There's a lot of things on that building that, that have not been kept up. We're trying to, to upkeep and, and uh, do a facelift, be a better uh, testimony in the community, as well as be more functional for, for what our needs are. Um, we had a team come and help on the roof. Uh, wonderful time. It, it's <clears throat> How do I put this? It's, it's a major difference being on the receiving end of a mission team. Uh, for, for 28 years, I was on the, was on the other side of the side. When you're on the receiving end, you get a different, uh, a different blessing from the Lord. It's a blessing to serve and be a, a part of that, of that uh, accomplishment. But it's another blessing to receive God's promise. And the Lord was a blessing to the mission teams that came and get the, get the, the uh, uh, facilities ready. ready. We had a green come from, from Washington State, State, and they purchased and installed all of the video equipment and the, the TV and all that stuff that's, uh, that's over the head, all the electronic stuff. stuff. Um, for the classroom, I just looks up with the Marinette, they're online, online, they put a, put a system in where we can get, we get internet, internet on the whole property, property in four different places, places um, where we have the internet, internet the, uh, security system on the internet so that, so that students especially, but people can't go, go to websites that they shouldn't, and I, it's, it's just really, really neat the way the Lord has provided things that I didn't even know that we needed, but then also things that, that he knows, and we all are like, well, oh, how's this going to happen? And then the Lord provides. But well, with that said, there's still, there's still a lot of needs. We need prayer support. We're working, one of the major things after the, the federal tax exemption thing is this uh, approval by the state to be a college. So we have to go through the process of registering with the Consumer Protection Agency, proving to them that we can um, offer the consumer, uh, proving to them that what they're paying for 
is legitimate, in other words. I'm afraid that that, that has, has been about nine months in the process, and uh, we're really close. We, we just submitted the paperwork uh, the second time last week, so, so we're waiting to hear back from them. We just, we just received funds for the furnace in the main building that's been going out. I spent quite a bit of money this winter on that, just keeping it up. And uh, we've got about $8,000 in the now towards that new furnace in the main building. We are, we are working on getting the curriculum redeveloped and everything for the, the classes. We don't have that. Uh, we really need to be opening in the school year. Um, I do have quite a few, probably about 30. Uh, potential students that have shown some interest, but we don't have the ability to uh, enroll yet until we're, until we're registered with the Consumer Protection Agency. So once that happens this summer, this summer, then we've really got to get all of them all rolling. Um, some, some are not willing to wait until, until there's only a few months between then and the school, the school the start of the school year, so we're so praying about that. About that. And then our financial support, <coughs> this is a different, a different realm here asking for support for for uh, ministry other than your your home. So, so this is this is separate from serving missionaries internationally through helps. This is late and train calls. So we don't even know yet, yet what all we need. But we do have this a business plan that we're working on uh, that is the finances are coming to to, to to the school from tuition and room and board. So there's one area that we're receiving finances. Um, the other one, and the other one, is from churches and individuals that are giving gifts to take care of the daily expenses and things like that, as well as one-time gifts for, uh, for like this furnace thing. We have a, a few of those needs, and we have a long list of uh, specific needs. needs. Uh, carpet in the dormitory. Uh, new refrigerator, things like that, like that, that we have on the list. On the list. But then the third area of income would be what we were, what we're calling the, uh, the, uh, the high business <laughs> plan. And that is under the Legacy Trade Corporation, the Trade Air Corporation, Corporation of the State of Utah, 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 Utah Corporation. Corporation. We're starting with small businesses. Once the college gets up and running, we'll be able to use the guys, train them, train them, let's say the Odyssey of the Department. And they're working on these cars that we buy from an auction on taking all the parts off and cleaning them up and put the parts on the shelf and have an online salvage. And we, all that stuff that is sold online across the country or across the world, that money goes right back into the automobile part. Um, maybe in the construction, construction trade, trade, we have our guys building, building uh, uh, tiny homes. Tiny homes. Or, or maybe maybe storage sheds or something like that. When we sell them to the only people they can sell them to the consumer, or we sell them to the consumer through Facebook Marketplace or something like that. And then we take the money and put that right back into the program. So there's a third third phase of this building business plans to finance the college and prayerfully or hopefully someday it will stand alone and be able to be able to take care of itself. Hopefully that hopefully that is understanding. We are praying for staff and faculty as well. As well. Uh, we hired our first, first. I guess he would be faculty member. He's the director of business and development. development. And Jeremy Sobel is his name. He graduated from Maranatha Baptist University. But, uh, business is a degree. I met him at a, at a missions conference that I was at. He came up to me afterwards and said, well, I really like the, like the concept of the ministry. ministry. Um, I've never, never, never been any good at construction. I don't know anything about automotive. I don't know anything about welding. Uh, but I have a business degree. Do you think that guy can use me? I was like, here's exactly what would be. Because all of our workers are construction masters. But to have a business guy on, on board, somebody that knows how to do all the, the marketing management and social media stuff that you really need for a, a college that age group where when they get advertised to it's through their phone right uh, somebody that knows how to do all of that has been trained in that really has a heart for the lord so they're coming out in may we have voted to pay them as as a board we voted that that we would pay them in the salary an annual salary and we're trusting the lord that he's going to bring that money in 
It is a leap of faith, yes, but I really believe that the Lord is in it and He wants us to do that. So pray for Jeremy and Rebecca Zobel and their little daughter, daughter Harmony. Uh, they're moving out uh, next so next month, is May, right? Yeah. So we're looking at the fall of 2024 to be our, our kickoff date. Um, I think it's August 26th. I have a display on the, in the lobby. Feel free to come out and ask questions. And then we'll look forward to the morning service after this. But I hope that uh, this is exciting to you. You have had a major part in my family and in our lives over the years preparing us now for what we're doing, plus all of the other projects that the Lord has accomplished. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sunday school hour. We pray that you would receive all the glory from it and that this church would continue to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.